was delivered unto the saints. Now look chapter 18. Look chapter 18. I will read verse 8. Look chapter 18. I will read verse 8. And let's see what Jesus says. If you have your Bible read it, if you don't just look at the screen and let's read it together. Are you there? Yes. Now let's read. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Amen. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, when we started this series of teaching, I dis I told us that the number one attack of the enemy is your faith. The first thing the devil is targeting in your life is your faith. And when Satan succeeded to take your faith, he has taken your life. And that's why the Bible says we should contend. We should fight. We should war. We should protect and resist the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. The faith that God has given to you, Satan wants to take it. So that he can make nonsense of you. And I also said that when your faith is in place, no matter what challenges attack arrows from the enemy, it will come and go, but you will not be broken. Your faith is your destiny. Your faith is your life. Your faith is your future. Your faith is your tomorrow. If you don't have faith, you are dead while you are living. And that's why God said, contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Now, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man will come back again, shall he find faith on the heart? The reason why Jesus said that was because Satan is launching out an attack to take the faith, to eradicate faith on the heart. So that when Jesus comes back, there won't be a single believer on the heart. It's after your faith. He wants to take away your life. Now look at this environment, this community. If you ask, if you ask average white man or English man, are you telling him about Jesus? He says, stop that nonsense. I don't believe there is God. God, as far as we are concerned, is dead. Their faith has been taken away. In this country, Satan has... Africa, this country brought light to us in Africa. Same missionaries to us in Africa. But the light they brought to us died in this. And we are bringing the light they brought to us. We are bringing them back to them. He said, where it was a religion of my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, but me, I don't believe there is God. They have no faith. Satan has crushed their faith. And Jesus said, nevertheless, if I come back again, I'm not sure if there will be faith on the heart. Because the attack will be so much that the faith that was delivered to the faith to the saints will be taken away from them. African German will tell you, I don't go to church. Why do I need God? When my government can produce or provide for me, what your God can do for me? I don't need God. The comfort has made them to deny that there is God. But I see a revival coming in. I see God is about to break forth over this city, over this nation, over Europe. I see a wave of a mighty revival that will bring, that will be bad faith in the heart of our young people. Many books I read when I was young, there were people from this country that wrote those books and fired me up to know that there is God. But today, 
Nobody in this country, even children, when you talk about God, they can report you. In fact, if you talk about God, you can be suspended from work. And there is no generation like this generation that there are so many attacks. The Aisi, the, the Ashabab, the Boko Haram, all manners are waging war against the Christian to make sure that they intimidate them and they, they forget about their faith. Many people have denied their faith because the attack is massive. And the attack on the church is against your faith because we are believers because you believe. So if there is no belief, there is no Christianity. They call us believers because we have faith in God. So Satan is after your faith to crash your life and destroy your destiny. And the Bible says the just shall live by faith. If you don't have faith, you don't have life. You just live an empty life. You work like a living corpse. Because faith is your life. And that is the number one target of the enemy. In his sanctuary, the Bible says, uh, the high praise of God must be heard in his sanctuary. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Yes. So you need to fight for your faith. That what you are going through now will not take by faith. Listen to me. Do you know where the devil is attacking you? He's attacking you, Mary, for years. There is no children. And people are suggesting all manners of things to you. Satan wants you to deny your faith and look for another alternative. But that devil is a liar. Yeah. Whatever the enemy is doing in your life, in this habit, every installation of Satan, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You are frustrated. You are. I mean, Paul said, he said, we are troubled on every side. Every side, trouble attacks on every side. But he said, you know, these things I refuse to give up. I will never give up on my faith. And that's why Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He said, I have fought a good fight of faith. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Christianity is a fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. Paul said, fight. A good fight of faith. You fight for your faith. Without contending, your life will be empty. So you need remarkable faith for your faith to be activated for supernatural exploits. You need to understand the spirit behind the letters. The Bible says that, that the, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Listen to me. Until you connect the spirit of the word of God. Come on now. It's ordinary story book to you. Ordinary story book to you. And behind every story in the Bible, there is a mystery. And until you connect the mystery, which is the revelation, your life remains the same, and Satan begins to beat you blue and black because you don't have the spirit behind the world. Kaya Baba Shatai. Tonight, God will reveal his word to Amen. you. Amen. I said, this service, God will give you revelation. Amen. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Vengeance faith. Somebody say vengeance faith. Vengeance faith. It's too slow. Says vengeance faith. Vengeance faith. Come on, echo it loud. Say vengeance faith. Vengeance faith. Vengeance faith is a kind of faith that God gave to the believers so that we can take our place in God. So that we can crash down every installations of Satan. So that we can take our possession of the land that God has given unto us. Many people like psychedelic Christianity. And that's why you see devil beating them. Satan is not your friend, it's your enemy. And if they vengeance faith to handle installations of wickedness. Somebody said, Pastor, why is it that you are talking about God is a vengeance God? 
and God wants us to destroy the enemy. Listen to me. God himself operated in this kind of vengeance fate. We saw Jesus operated in this kind of fate. In Genesis chapter 12, when you read from verse 3, God spoke to Abraham. Abraham, get out of your country. In Psalm 110, when you read verse 3, and for the Bible says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. God wants you to rule in the midst of your enemy. Look at Psalm 23. Then he said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. And for you to rule in the midst of your enemy, the Bible says, Out of Zion shall the strong of his strength go forth. You need power. You need vengeance. Faith that the enemy know if he toys around your border, is cursed. But you allow the enemy to enter and go back. No border control. Enter into your life. Mess you up and jump up. Mess you up and jump up. From today, I decree every enemy that creep into your life, I deport them back to hell in the name of Jesus. Amen. As a spiritual immigration this morning, every illegal immigrant in your life, in your home, in your body, they are deported to hell in the name of Jesus. Vengeance faith. God said, the one that cost you, and we cost it. Go cost. In John, I mean, in, in, in Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, when you read verse 14, verse 13 and 14, Jesus was coming out of Bethany. And the Bible said, Jesus was hungry. And he got to this fig tree, and he wanted to eat. And you could not find if any fruit on that tree. And Jesus looked at the tree and said, From today, no man hid from you. Jesus placed a curse on that tree. And the following morning, when they were coming back, in verse 20, 21 and 22, the Bible said, Peter perceived the tree that Jesus caused and said, Master, the tree you cursed last night is dried to the roots. And Jesus said, have this kind of faith of God. The kind, one of the kind of faith of God you need to have is a vengeance faith. Ah, yeah, yeah. And you see, vengeance faith happen in 24 hours. Yes, sir. He caused it today. When they are coming back the next day, he said it was dried to the roots. One of the faiths of God you need to have is the vengeance faith that releases cops and judgment upon the enemies. Anything that is not of God, they deserve your cause. It takes a provoking faith to release a curse on the installations of Satan. Many of you don't know that the God you serve is a man of war. He's a man of war. Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. The Bible says, Our God is a man of war. Jehovah is his name. Your God is a fighter. So you must be like your father. Amen. Your father is a fighter. You must have a fighting spirit of your father. God has given you the territory. You must not allow the enemy to creep into your territory. Yes, sir. You need to stand as a Satan. You can't come in. I place you under a curse. I destroy you. Every powers of the enemy. You see the devil going into the lives of your children that you are watching. Well, we are in Europe. That devil is a liar. Yes. <laughs> you place them on a the curse. You put the judgment of God on them. David said in Psalm 144 verse 1, He said, Blessed be my God, my maker, my maker, who teaches my hand to fight and my fingers to war. You must be a fighter. You must be a warrior. Prosper. Listen to me. Prophet are agent of establishment. Prophet are agent of vibration. I stand in my office as a prophet this morning. Anything that stands on your way, I crush them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
I decree they are crushed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in mock Elisha. And Elisha looked at him and he said, Counselor, you mock God. He said, even if God opened the windows of heaven, that was a ridicule. Even if your God opened the wind, even compare God to man. Ridiculing God. Even if your God opened the windows of heaven, this cannot be your Elijah. The man of God was angry. He said, You will see it, but you will not taste it. You will see it, but you will never taste out of it. Because you don't believe. And the following morning, when the abundance came, the counselor, because he was a top man, he was trying to guide people. Wait, 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 no, but the Bible said they trampled him down, they marched him, and they killed him, and he died there. He saw the abundance, but he never tasted it. Listen to me, anyone that mocks you, I decree they will expire. Amen. Every power, every witches, every wisdom, every sickness in your body, yeah, 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 I decree. Yeah, yeah. Expire in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say expire in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then we expire. Amen. Then we expire. Amen. Every satanic attack over your life. I cause them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I destroy them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I paralyze them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every attack on your destiny. I crush them in Jesus' name. Amen. In your health, I destroy them. Amen. In your marriage, I destroy them. Amen. In your home, I destroy them. Amen. If I be a man of God, in this month of September, God will visit you. Amen. I say, God will visit you. Amen. 